Next up, we'd like the full electronic configuration of lead. So let's just remember what the electronic configuration is. And the electronic um, configuration tells you the way electrons are organized into those orbitals that we previously discussed. And so again, remember that I have the ns orbitals, the np orbitals, and nd. This would just be a number like 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, because it's a different um, quantum number that we use in identification. So s is one orbital, and so it has two electrons. p is three orbitals, so it can hold six electrons, and d is five orbitals. So it can hold 10 electrons. Now using Madelung's rule that takes into account um, the Pauli exclusion principle, off ball principle, and Hund's rule, um, we get this diagram. And so if we're filling them, we would fill them in this manner. And this just ensures, by following this, we're just ensuring that we're filling um, the orbitals of least energy before we get to orbitals of higher energy. And so if we fill them this way, we get the ground, the electronic configuration for the ground state of whatever atom we're looking at. So the lowest energy configuration. And so you'd fill 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Let me just write that out. 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 5p6, 6s2, 4f14, so on and so forth. My apologies for not mentioning the f orbitals that are seven orbitals and can hold 14 electrons therefore and so i can decide to figure out how many electrons i have for lead which can easily be done by just looking at the periodic table here and we see that we get lead it sometimes takes a second to find things right here and so we have 82 electrons and so you just count all of the electrons until you hit 82. Another way to do this is to just simply read the periodic table. And so um, to get all the way down here, I can just count from the top until I hit uh, lead. And as I'm counting, I'm counting out the orbitals. And so this is 1s2, 2s2, because this is the s block. This is the f block. This is the d block. And this is the p block. And so 1s2... 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, all the way until you hit the lead. And so let's go about doing that. 1s2 because of the hydrogen and helium. 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10 because we drop the n by 1 once you enter the d block. And we can see that reflected here in Madelung's rule that we go from 4s to 3d, which means we are definitely on the right track. So 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 5p6, 6s2. Here it gets a little tricky as to which comes uh, before between the f and the d block. In which case, it's best to just refer to um, Madelung's rule in order to figure it out. We see that we go from 6s to 4f, so 4f14. And so what that is covering is everything here, which has been um, hidden in the periodic table because we tend to not deal with them um, at the undergraduate level even. 
And so, and then we go into um, 5d10 and lastly 6p2, because we see that we only take two steps once we enter the p block. And this is going to be it for lead.